We are live. JT here. Welcome to The Huddle. The Huddle is where I sit down with successful people from the world of sport and coaching. It's to learn more about their journey to greatness. Why do I have these conversations? Because success always leaves clues. I just want to say thank you, whether you are tuning in live with us today, whether you're watching the replay, whether you're listening to the podcast. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart to yours for, for spending some time with us today. I have been looking forward to chatting with my guest today. Um, again, really grateful he was able to carve out some time to speak with us. My guest in the huddle today is the head coach of the University of Windsor Lancers football program, Coach John Paul Cercelli. How are you, Coach? I'm great. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, I know we've got some big shoes to fill. You've had some great guests here uh, o- over the past uh, few months, for sure. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that, Coach. And, and again, really uh, enthused for our conversation today. Absolutely. The first thing I, I want to do, Coach, is really just take a moment just to send you some appreciation and, and gratitude. Uh, the one thing I've really always admired about you is, is how you go about your business, right? Whether it's personally, whether it's professionally watching you coach, I just love how you always carry yourself with, with a level of professionalism, how you always focus on doing things the right way. So, so I just wanted to take a moment just to acknowledge you for that. So thank you for providing me with that reminder, coach. I appreciate that. Okay. So the huddle, we always like to start off, you know, light, because one thing I always like to remind people is, Hey, life is a game and games are supposed to be fun. So the first thing I would love to ask you is what is a, you know, interesting fact, maybe it's a quirk, that a lot of people don't know about you that you would feel comfortable sharing with our audience. Yeah, yeah this is something I, I sometimes share with uh, some of our players uh, down the road, and I don't know how many um, really really know this currently at Windsor, but uh, I, I've got a I got a pretty strong musical background. So when uh, I was younger, you know, starting to get into sport, and uh, football was definitely not one of one of those at the time. Um, I was fortunate enough to start learning how to play the piano and, and later on moved to, to the cello and, and right throughout high school, I was part of the, uh, part of the choir. So um, I've got a musical background. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm at the top when it comes to that, but it definitely um, served me well from an athletic standpoint, understanding um, the importance of rhythm and, and really just having a greater appreciation for the fact that you, you want well-rounded individuals. And I think in a time where we are today, where so many people want to specialize, it's important to know, um, yeah, it's great to play multiple sports, but it's also good to have someone who's involved in music, who's involved in theater, who, who's doing things outside of sport. And it just generally makes for a more well-rounded individual. And that was one thing that we always pushed uh, with our high school athletes, do, do as much as you can, get involved as much as you can, because once, once you finish those four or five years, it, it's over. And, and that's when you kind of have to start kind of specializing and focusing in. So yeah, that, that was one thing that definitely shaped me. And again, not to say that, uh, you know, I, I'm an expert in any of those fields. Uh, I just think it really served me well uh, moving forward. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's an important message. And, and why I love that is just, I love how you talked about, you know, being well-rounded, right, in all areas of life. And, and we do live in, in a culture now that really wants us to specialize early. So I love that you, you know, preach that message. I know that's one thing that, uh, especially in high school, when you were coaching, we always knew that, you know, CCH uh, players were very well-rounded and did multiple things. So again, I, I love that you're preaching that message, coach. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's so important just because um, we're looking more and more for people who maybe from a holistic approach understand all aspects. And we are really at a time now, I think, in society where it's so important to understand the differences that uh, allow us to still be unified. So the more areas that, that you are able to encounter, I think the better you are understanding differences 
and that allows to come closer together opposed to being just this one track mind and only maybe experiencing things one way. So I think that's really important for um, any of our young people moving forward. Oh, a great message. So I'm curious, you, you've, you've been involved in sport for a while now and, and you've had a very successful career first as an athlete and then as a coach. I'm curious, what role has sport played for you in your life and what has maybe been the biggest lesson that you've really taken away from sport? You know, it's, it's been instrumental in anything that I've personally done because I think sport really presents you with those first challenges you have in life. And once you start overcoming some of those challenges or obstacles, whether it's something as simple as learning a skill, or maybe you, you make a competitive team, all of a sudden you start getting this confidence. Okay. I, I can get back at it. And I, I know for me, one of the, one of the early ones was um, when, when I was playing hockey at, at a youth age, it was always about trying to get on one of these competitive teams. And, and I think there was a span of, you know, five, six years, keep going, keep going. You don't get that opportunity. And every year was go to camps, go, go to different instructors, learn more about it. And when you finally you know, achieve that goal. And as, as small as it might be for some person, I think it makes all the difference when we can achieve something, some type of goal in sport, it sets us up going forward saying, okay, I can always relate back to something that I did my own personal experience. And now when I'm faced with maybe more adult challenges, look, I've done this before and it's just now at a, at a bigger scale. So I think that's a really important part is sport challenges us from an individual standpoint and whether it's team or individual sport there's something that you have to be able to to overcome and maybe push your limits that you, you haven't uh, maybe done in the past so i think that part's really important and and that's really where i think the work ethic comes from um you know my father always pushed that in me and my my mother my grandparents you know when you have immigrant grandparents that come in there, there's this whole thing about work ethic and making it the best that, that you can be. And I learned at a pretty early age that though you can't control all the events that take place in your life and you can't always control what that outcome is, you can control your response. That's the one thing that you can always do. And the more that you have this disciplined thought out response that you're, you're, you're gonna push yourself as hard as you can the more likely you're going to have a, a more positive outcome. It doesn't always work that way, but at least, you know, here's what I can control. And that's what I'm going to focus on versus uh, all the external factors that I have no control over. So I think that's a big part of what, what sport has taught for me, uh, not just in my career in sport, but definitely in life. Mm -hmm. and, and I love that share. And, and what I really heard from you is, you know, sport, anyone that's played at a high level, anyone that's coached at a high level knows, you know, it, it, the adversity, the challenges, the obstacles are inherent in there. But I love how you talked about, we always have a choice. The easy thing to do is to react, but, but can you discipline yourself to actually respond and, and give an intentional response to that? And, and that's what, again, as long as I've known you, as long as I've, you know, senior coach, coach against you, it's, that's always been one of your great traits. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something that we're always pushing with, with our athletes. And, and there's a number of people out there that have kind of coined it. I, I know uh, Tim Kite's one that said it's mm -hmm. E plus R equals O. And that's something that uh, we, we teach on a regular basis with our guys is understanding, you know, you, you can only control your own 20 square feet, your own little area, but you always have control over your response. And so often we take that knee jerk, quick reaction um, and, and just go for it versus, hey, take a moment, think about it before we're able to, to respond in the way that's gonna really help us going forward. So it, it, it's not easy and not to say that I'm always on that way, but we, we definitely you know, try and take a pause, think about it, especially when, it, when it's a major decision going forward. So in 2019, you moved to the University of Windsor and, and, and stepped into the head coaching role. And the one thing that, you know, looking back at your journey, and, and we talked about this earlier, was really this idea around family and, and culture. And, and those are words that, you know, uh, can get often used in sports. They're, they sometimes are used as very cliche. But I'm curious, how has 
the rule, like family and the idea of, of creating culture. How has that been, like how have you developed that during your time at, at Windsor? Yeah, I, I think early on when, when this opportunity presented itself, it was, okay, we're, we're going into a challenging situation. Um, how are we going to go about it? And the first thing is you, you got to make sure you have good people around you. And um, from my standpoint, having a great influence from my father and, and also my, my younger brother, it was, hey, if I'm going to be doing this, I can't do it alone. I, I'm going to need to have you guys come on board for this. People that you trust that, that are like-minded. And that was the first part. And then it's, okay, how are we going to now build this, this blueprint? Um, because we want to attract people to a place that maybe is not as popular, or it's easy for other schools to, to take shots at a city, at a program, at an institution. So it was this idea of family. And the, the thing with family, like you said, it's, it's overused so many times because people say, well, we're not really a team, we're a family. You can say that, but you got to actually follow through with it. And for us, it was, what are those core values? So no matter what happens, we will never veer away from what what we are and that was what love serve and care and that's where that came from because we said what's most important in our family um and it was love serve and care and when we talk about love it's understanding that if you really love someone and it's that agape it's that unconditional love you're going to push them as hard as they they can be pushed both on and off the field and it's, it's not always going to be fun. Like at times it's, it's tough love and you're pushing someone to be the best. You're not going to be saying it's okay to be mediocre here, driving people to, to their limit. But at the same time, knowing that over the course of four to five years, however long someone's in school, there's going to be adversity. We have to be there to put our arm around their shoulder and be that support because love being unconditional it can't just be when it serves us well in football. And we look at football, really, we're, we're talking about three months of the year, what's happening for those other nine months, there, there's, there's got to be more of a presence. So that's where that love part came from. The, the serve was this servant leadership, knowing that it, it often bothered me when, when coaches would make comments like, you know, I could be at home right now, or I could be doing this and almost guilting players. It's like, but that's your choice. For us, it's, we need people who understand it's not about what can you do for me as a coach. It's I'm here to serve you. I'm here to make things better. And it might be my background in education that, that made a big part of that, but it's you're coming here and I'm doing everything I can to make it better for you. That's what my role is. And that's not to say, you know, the players run the show, but how am I going to make it the best experience possible for you? Because that's ultimately what I want to do when I'm serving you. And when you have all your coaches or administrators and support staff showing that, now the players have an example. Now the players say, okay, this is what the coaches, this is what the staff is doing for me. How do I now reciprocate that back in the community? And that's where this whole push to, to, to really be this, this program that served the city came from. How am I going to go out and volunteer and help with this organization, raise money for this organization, raise awareness here? Because our guys have to understand, yes, we want you to have a degree when, you, when it's time to move on. And yes, it's great to put on a resume that from this varsity athlete. But if you can have four to five years of volunteer work and make this laundry list of connections, not only is that going to serve you well when it's time to move on to the next part of your life, but now you've created this whole new network of people that you can tap into just because you said, I'm going to go out and, and make something better for somebody else, or everything doesn't just evolve around me. I'm here to serve other people. So that's a big part of that, that serve part. And, and the last one is the care. And a lot of times I know explain to our players, they say, well, isn't, isn't care the same as love? It's like, no, 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 no. Care is the action word. Care is this verb of I'm going to give you my most precious commodity, which is time. And, and when we talk about where we're, we are as a society right now, how to unify, we've got to give people more time. If we really want to understand where different cultures come from, if we want to understand where different people and what their thoughts and opinions are, we need to give them time to understand. And we may not agree 
with what, what their stance is or their opinion. But by saying, you know what, I'm going to give you time and I'm going to really care about what you have to say, you bring people closer together. And it's showing this empathy that, yes, I'm the same as you and we may not be on the exact same path and we may not have had the same upbringing or same experiences, but as a person, I'm going to listen to you and I'm going to be there to support you as best as I can. And that's really where that came from. And knowing where love, serve, care is now as coaches, whether it's recruiting or coaching or fundraiser, or meeting with alumni, you know that you can always go back to this foundation of what it means to be family. But you, you, you're, not, you're not just coming up with a line. There's something deep rooted here that you're going to constantly be working back towards. And, and that was a big part of what we wanted to create when we got here about, yes, it's family, but how do we make it deeper rooted than that? And, and, and that was a big part with Love, Serve, Care. Coach, again, I know we were chatting before we hopped on. But what I love about what you talk about is, is this idea, and you can really see your understanding of holistic, right, of, of spirit, mind, and body. And we can know things intellectually, like I, like I was sharing with you, right? We can know those words like love, right, serve, care, but, but can you embody them, right, in, in your heart? And when I'm talking about heart, I'm not talking about that physical heart, but in that subconscious, right, what the early Greeks referred to. As, as that emotional mind. And I love how you talk about embodying it, of being it, because that there's nothing more powerful than that. So, so I really want to acknowledge you for, for truly focusing, not on just saying the words, but actually embody the, embodying them and being them and, and, and really preaching that, that important message. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that. That's that's not something that it was just me. There, it's a collective group, and and like I said, when you surround yourself with like-minded people, um, it, it's so much easier to work in an environment because you know you're on the same page and and you're thinking the same things. And when you develop a concept like that, um, it just makes your day to day so much easier because no matter what you encounter, you say, okay, let's go back to why we're really here. And, and those values are really entrenched in what we do. And then that allows you to have a philosophy that allows you to, to create a mission statement that allows you to have, uh, like for us, our, our, our culture that we preach the Lancer way with, with, you know, there's other pillars there that we look at, but it's creating that, that base. What is it that we're always going to refer back to? So I'm never going to be, I'm going to win at all costs, or I'm going to put someone in jeopardy just because we're, we're, we're trying to, to get an extra win or, or not be who we are. So when you have those values and you're constantly preaching with your coaches and that trickles down to your players, um, that's when you know you, you're developing something special, I believe. Mm. No, it, it's a great point. One thing that caught my attention when you were sharing was you, you brought up the idea of developing compassion and understanding. Now, from my experience, those aren't words that are always preached by by, by coaches, right? And again, not to be malicious, I think it's it's sometimes, it's, it's not having that understanding of how powerful, you know, compassion understanding can be. I'm really curious, as you have started to build this sense of family and, and, and changing a culture, what has the response been like from the player? Because these are things that, you know, aren't always embedded in, in high level sport. Yeah, it's... It, it's tricky because, you know, we, we talk about coming in 2019 and we, we've been here for a couple of years and you only have one season because of the pandemic. So sometimes it's tough to just measure that. I mean, how, how do you measure if people are following in a culture and, you know, you lose some people because, OK, this isn't for me. And that's one thing we talk to the players we recruit right away. I mean, if, if saying I love you is not something that you're comfortable with, this may not be the, the right place for you. Um, but by the same token, it, it's trying to celebrate the, the little victories. And it was one thing that, that, that we spoke about earlier is if you come and say, we're going to change a culture and here's who we're about and everything's focused on wins and then you don't win, what's that buy-in going to be like? It, it's just not going to happen. And knowing that we're not just taking over something that needs to be rebuilt, it's, it's, it's starting from scratch, essentially, and saying, this is what's important to us, and, and this is where we're coming from. So you essentially have to say, what are areas that we can focus on? And when we talk about that love and pushing, a big part was right away, we're going to change 
how we view academics. And again, maybe it's, it's the education background, but it was at an early time saying, okay, everyone preaches study hall, but what does yours actually look like? What's the time we're putting in? And I think a big change for us, as I said, look, I, I get it. It's not always the most glamorous spot, but as the head coach, I'm going to take on that role and I will oversee study hall and have some tutors work, work under me type of thing. And that changed significantly because we went from different places I've been, it's about study hall for, for first year players. And then that's it. And we basically said, anyone who is not an academic all Canadian, anyone who's not an 80% average is going to be in study hall. And I'm going to be there in study hall. So anytime the head coach is present, you're making it important. So that's what I mean by saying, you know, people can say, Hey, academics and schooling, that's the most important thing. Then why is the head coach not involved with it? If that's what you're going to be telling people, and, and we're having people move across the country, um, across the city, across, in some cases, the continent, you've got to be able to walk the talk and say, okay, I'm saying this is most important. I'm going to follow through by being here. And all of a sudden, you create this contagious culture where, well, it's not just freshmen, it's, it's guys even in their fourth year, and they're all coming together, and they see the head coach, like, okay, I guess I, I got to put some time in. And you start fostering that culture that, Academics is important, N nothing special, no, no tricks about it, just putting more time into it. And all of a sudden the grades start improving and guys are seeing it. And there's more guys than, than ever before becoming academic all Canadians. And they start buying and say, okay, th this is something that we can do. This is, this is important. So I, I think that was a big part of, here's how we're gonna change things, knowing that we can't just wake up and let's change the talent level we have, let's change where we've been historically, and all of a sudden we're, we're gonna go wait. No, it doesn't work that way. So what are the things that you can build upon to make it better? And, and the other piece was, was the community service, just being out there more often, taking more initiative. Even in the pandemic, our, our players were able to, to raise money through you know, online uh, video game tournaments. And all of a sudden we're, we're supporting adopt the families, we're supporting the food bank. And it just makes a big difference. And then we, we were recognized this past year um, at University of Windsor, it's called the IG Cup. And it goes to the team within the, the university that best exemplifies academics, athletics, and community involvement. And I remember when we first got to the university, there was a lot of people said, you know, coach, don't worry about that award. Football can't win. It's never won. It, it's just not possible. So it's kind of like, all right, challenge accepted. We're going to we're going to go out and do this thing. So that, that's a little piece that's so important for us as 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 program builders. But then to say, hey, look, here's what you did. And it wasn't like we had to change things drastically. We just reallocated your time and, and look what's happened. So I think that's been a big part of how you get people to buy in. Again, we still have to play games and we've only had one season here and it, it's still going to be a long road ahead. But by building on things that aren't just wins, knowing that, again, the season's only really three months, you know, four months, if you want to include camp. Well, what are you doing all the other days? How, how are you fostering that growth? And if we're going to use football to set up the next part of your life, how do you focus in on those? It can't just be lip service when we have practice. How, how do we keep building that? Um, from a family standpoint, it's great when you have family and like-minded people, but something that we had success at other places is get the parents involved, whether it was high school, university. Sometimes you get to this point where, okay, university, it's a men's league. So the parents don't need to be involved. And, and we saw as the other way is this is really the last chance for parents to really still be involved in, in, in their son's lives. So like some other programs out there, we said, let's create this parent group. And, you know, there's a little apprehension early on saying, you know, this isn't like this city or that city. Uh, I'm not sure if that can work. And, and really after a week, they, you just saw all these people come together and it's been amazing what they've been able to do for us. Um, they, they, they serve us a, uh, a team brunch every Sunday, and that's like everyone's favorite part of the week. But then they're, they're in other support ways, whether it's through fundraising, whether it's through getting together with parents, just staying connected. And when you can rely on that parent group, that, that group of people, especially if you're an outside athlete who's coming from another province, there's nothing better than a hug from uh, a mom or dad, uh, win, lose, or draw. And that just really sets the tone for what it's all about when, when you're trying to preach that family, when you have family there on a regular basis. So th those are areas that we've really tried to push. Mm -hmm. And then I think the last piece has been how you develop that culture. So again, it it's great to talk about it, 
how are you going to actually implement it? And, and this is really where you've got to surround yourself with great people. So I'm lucky that um, I've got some great coaches in, in my brother, uh, Pat Donovan, uh, Randy Beer. These are guys who are here all the time and they can put a bigger focus onto the X's and O's than maybe I'm going to as a head coach. And that allows me to focus on how are we going to develop this culture? And what we were able to do is we will have a weekly meeting that has nothing to do with football. So when the pandemic first hit, um, we were able to get on Zoom and you start establishing breakout rooms and you start posing questions to individuals. And we would do this for 12 weeks each semester. And just here's what we're trying to strive towards. It's about owning your own, you know, 20 square feet, that little area that you have. It's about making sure that you understand E plus R equals O events happen in your life you got no control of the outcome you can help manipulate that based on this response and just teaching those things over and over having special guests come in talking about what's happening culturally out in our society speaking about black lives matter changing the way maybe some some individuals have been brought up and and shifting their ideas and thoughts i think it's been so important because now we can say here's the culture we're at and this is how we're going about teaching it so whether it's a PowerPoint presentation from myself, whether it's posing questions, having guys go into breakout sessions, and prior to the pandemic, we, we would have guys go into different groups and, and talk about and discuss, but then you bring it back and you build confidence in the players because they come up and they share their ideas. And, and for some, they're not used to that. And it takes a little bit of time, but you get them out of their comfort zone because they're going to respond to these questions on whatever it happens to be within culture that you're promoting. And, and now players are listening. And then you get, you know, the fifth year quarterback working with the first year defense alignment. I mean, that would never happen. So you get guys out of this comfort zone to share their ideas. And then when we talk about love, serve, care, I mean, it opens it right up. Emotionally, our guys are a lot more vulnerable because they, they've been able to share this. And that helps with that deeper connection, that deeper empathy, because now you're forced to know who your teammate is a lot better. Because, I mean, we, we both played. And you understand that maybe as an offensive lineman, the times you're going to be meeting with the defensive backs is, is few and far between. I mean, let alone having offense and defense cross. So how do we break those barriers? How do we share what that empathy should look like? Um, so that, that's a, been a big part of how we've created that, that buy-in for the culture. And again, not to say that everyone will be on board or other things happen in life, people move on. That's the reality. But this is what we're offering to our guys, and, and we're trying to serve them as best we can. It can't just be we're creating this culture. Coach, how do I learn this culture? How do I become a better person? What is it that I need to do? And when you start having these questions and, and, and having these discussions, it just promotes that so much more. And that's been a real positive part of, of what we've been able to do. But it, it doesn't happen if you don't have the people. If, if, if I was the only guy and I didn't have that support staff, it, it'd probably be very difficult to do that because then you got to concentrate solely on what the X's and O's are. Um, when you have a strong support that believe in everything, you can now go out and say, okay, here's the next part. Here's how I'm going to build this holistic program. Here's how I'm going to build the entire person, not just a football player. So uh, again, having the right people makes, makes a big difference. Again, coach, so amazing. I, again, I, I'm just blown away by, by your understanding of, of, of this holistic approach. And, and what I really heard from you were a couple of things. One, really helping people understand the importance of living inside out as opposed to outside in, which, which I really caught from the first little bit of what you talked about. But this, and the second thing I love that you talked about is it's about creating this family environment because environment is so important. But within that environment, creating opportunities for them to actually immerse themselves in intentional action so that, again, they actually get to be and embody those, those, those core pillars, those values, whatever you want to call them. So, again, Coach, kudos to you for, for, for seeing the big picture. I, I appreciate that. Again, that just comes from, I, I think, an upbringing where, you know, you're surrounded with, with great people that... Uh, tell you, hey, here's what's important. And then just, just evolving. I mean, again, it's not just solely my ideas. It's, it's having 
people that you trust that say, hey, this might be a direction we want to go. And then a lot of the information's out there. I mean, that's, that's the wild thing. There, there's, <laughs> there's so many books, there's so many seminars, so many videos. But I think a lot of times when you're coaching, what it comes down to is, okay, that stuff's great, but I don't really have time for, for love in my program. I mean, we got to focus on just getting this playbook together and, and how am I going to teach it to this individual? But if you can develop deeper than that, that, that's that love and trust that you want to build. And again, it doesn't happen overnight. And I'm not telling anyone here that if you do this, all of a sudden you're going to have success. I mean, we've had success where we've been, but obviously this is a, an even bigger challenge and it's going to take time. But I, I really believe that building people, developing those relationships is, is the best way to go about doing it. And, you know, time will tell if, if that relates well onto the field. It has in, in, in all our other journeys. But at least we know from an academic, a community standpoint, this family environment that we're creating that people are leaving um, better than when they got here. And, and that's really what's important because we, we want you to use football to set up the next part of your life, to leave as a better man, to leave as a better father, to leave as a better spouse, to leave as a contributing member of society. Because that's ultimately, when we look at a lot of issues that are taking place, it's growing up without a father, growing up in a, in a single family, we need to be accountable. And if we can teach some of those lessons along the way, then honestly, you know, the scoreboard will take care of itself. Yeah, I, again, great, great, great advice there. So one thing that sort of came up is, is you talked about, you know, sort of in this journey, it, and you've had a very diverse coaching background, right? you took the road less travel, right? You, you were very successful at the high school level, at the OPFL level, at the Team Ontario level. And then you decided to take the road less travel and really focus on, on making, you know, jumping to the university. What has it been like for you? What, what has been the biggest takeaway as you have taken the road less traveled? And I, I will say, you know, speaking from my own experience, I know leaving the safe and comfortable world of, of high school education is, is not an easy decision. So, so I'm just really curious, what, what has, what's been the biggest takeaway on your journey? Yeah, they, you know, there, there, there's, there's a lot. I'm, I think a big part is, again, road less travel. Uh, I can't, I can only really think of one other coach in, in, in all sport right now that, that was a teacher at one point and then became a head coach. And that, that'd be Greg Marshall because everyone else says, hey, I'm going to go right into to coaching and, and kind of cut my teeth and go from there. I think the education backgrounds made a huge difference um, from the standpoint of knowing how important education is. So that's helped from that standpoint. Um, maybe understanding relationships a little bit better. But I think a big part, and, and anyone who's a high school coach can appreciate this, and this was one of the things we wanted to do, is say, hey, you can be a high school coach and get to that next level and still make it about the same values you had in high school. I mean, one thing that made high school so great is you're seeing the players all the time and you, you might be teaching them in a class and it, it's just a real strong family environment that that's so important. Like, why can't we bring that to the next level? Why can't we have that same fun and enthusiasm at the university level? I get it. It's more serious, but ultimately we want people to have fun. That's why you're here. We don't want people dreading practice. And I think that's something that you see a lot of times it's, I got to go through this grind versus, Hey, I know it's going to be a grind, but I'm going to really enjoy this. So amp it up, have that energy. And I think as a high school coach, and, and I know you can appreciate and anyone else there listening is you're not just a football coach. When, when, when you come out of high school, I mean, you wear so many hats, but from a football standpoint, um, you're the grounds crew because you're lining the field that, that doesn't happen at the university level, or you're ordering the equipment, you're sizing people, you're the equipment manager. You are the fun. You're wearing all these hats and then, oh, shoot, basketball season's coming. I'm coaching there or I'm coaching wrestling or, or for me, I was coaching badminton. I'm running student council. You start understanding that as a coach, maybe you're a little bit in this more holistic approach. So there's an adjustment period. Um, obviously, I wasn't thrown into the same way that maybe some coaches who, as soon as they finish playing, they're right into that recruiting world. And, and that's been an adjustment for me. But I think because I got to experience coaching at, at, at all different levels and, and, and really 
multiple sports. And again, being that coach versus just a football coach, being the grounds crew, being the equipment guy. I think it's, it's just served me so much better understanding where other people are coming from. Because one thing that's, I think, difficult for, for some other coaches that maybe are used to the pro level, um, you come to Canadian University, it's, you know, why isn't football number one? Well, it, it, it's not the most important thing. That, that's the reality. And the pandemic showed us that. <laughs> it didn't discriminate. <laughs> so football's wiped out. Well, what are we going to do now? Do we just sit and wait for it? No, we got to keep developing people. What's the next part that we're going to do? Because the calendar keeps flipping. The sun keeps rising. Um, it, it's on to the next thing. And if, if we learned anything from that, it's, it's things that we thought were maybe the most important in our life aren't. So when you have that approach, knowing, that, especially at a high school level, that sport is still not seen as number one, you might be a little bit more equipped to understand, okay, everyone here isn't just here to serve the football program or football is not number one. I, I understand that this isn't what we watch on Saturdays at the NCAA, and this isn't what we're seeing at, at the pro level. How is it different? What is it that we can best do to serve and really give these guys the best experience? So I think those have been some of the key takeaways going, like you said, the, the road less traveled. Yeah. And I love what you're talking about and, and what really jumped out to me is like that perspective, right? Like of having that, that bigger vision of this is like the game of life, right? And, and football is one vehicle, but it's really about creating and, and I, this keeps coming up in conversations, but it's like that old OUA tagline, right? Champions for life. And a champion for life is someone who thrives in all areas, not just as a football player, but you know, in their health and their relationships and their academics career. So again, coach, I, I love that holistic approach. Yeah, because we know that, you know, one, one guy could have a one year career or injury all of a sudden derails it or whatever it happens to be. So to, to me, you still kind of owe it to, to teach those lessons. It can't just be like, oh, we taught it last, you know, every year we, we got to keep going back and renewing it. And the, the one thing that I'm always cognizant of, it's great that as the head coach, I know the message. Well, of course, that, that's that's where it's coming from our coaches have to be able to say the same kind of thing and our players that are leaders have to understand that. So it trickles down to the young guys coming through. That's how you continue to build it. And, and a lot of times you'll see where a program may have success and then it goes through a down spiral. It's well, what happened. A lot of times it's, you're not teaching that, that, that culture, that message, those core values. So as great as it is that I can sit here and talk to you about it, to, to me, what's telling is when our players can go out and say, this is what it's about. And, and they're not at the same point of it, but that's what you want to get to because you, we quickly understand in this profession. I mean, I learned it real early in teaching that everyone's replaceable and you always want to leave a place in a better spot than when you were first there. So how are you grooming the next leader? To, to me, that's how you have success when you move on and whatever you were doing just keeps getting better because you did such a great job of teaching the next leaders. And then they're able to, to continue to run that, that program, that whatever it happens to be that much better because of what you were able to teach. Amen, brother. I love it. I, again, I love, love the big picture. One, one question that sort of popped in my head as you were sharing, and again, we've been talking about the holistic athlete is, Depending on when people are watching this, you know, during the Olympics, right, with um, with what happened with uh, Simone Biles going there, it's really been interesting to step back and observe just the discussion going on because I feel it's a very polarizing topic right now. Uh, the the one thing is, it, it's been a great practice for me to to really demonstrate some compassion to to really not judge people based on their opinions. But I'm curious. You're, you're on the ground level. The 21st century athlete is different, right? Every generation, they have things that they do, you know, just they have their own unique. I'm really curious. Is uh, the whole idea around mental health, the 21st century athlete, how has that shifted in your experience? Even thinking back to, you know, when we were playing in university versus where it is now, like, has it changed? Like, you know, do we, do we have to treat those athletes differently? Yeah, it's, it, it, it's, it's a real interesting question because 
Um, I know there's, there's some books I've gone back and read and, and there was a book called the, the it was just called the coaches from, I think 1978. I remember going through it and it was talking about how all these athletes are changing from what these coaches were used to in, in the fifties and sixties. And you're reading like this, this could be written today yeah. because it's like every generation is saying it's changing. It's changing. I think the one thing that has remained constant with any athlete is everyone wants to have some kind of structure and some kind of discipline in their life, no, no matter what the generation is. I think what we're seeing now is people understanding that when we talk about mental health, there's like something there. I know some of the struggles I had early on at the university level, you know, you're thrust into, uh, you know, an important role. And you're away from home and school's totally different than it was in high school. And I remember a few times thinking, man, I don't know if I can, I can do this, but you know, you're, you're told, well, you're just homesick or you, you just got the blue, like, and, and you couldn't label it. And you just kind of said, okay, well, I'm going to shove this deep down and, and power on. And, you know, hopefully it doesn't come back at a later point, but now we're at this point where you can identify, okay, let's open up and talk. And, and a big part of what we've tried to do is have this, um, essentially team council where, where we have a, a group of players that we feel can, can move forward and, and really support the rest of our athletes. So kind of a, an in between the coaches and players, why that's important is because now you have players who, who are new to the situation that can speak to their peers, relate to someone who just went through it, um, you know, two or three years earlier, because I, I think most coaches say, Hey, we have an open door policy. Come talk to us aren't too many 19, 20 year olds are like, yeah, yeah. can't wait to talk to the head coach. Uh, I'm sure everything's <laughs> going to go great. Or yeah. I'm sure I won't all of a sudden lose my spot. You know, there's, there's that hesitancy. It's not going to happen. So it's great to say that, but you need to have further support. So our guys can go and, you know, have a coffee or, or share a sandwich and talk about issues with football, issues with school, issues in their personal life. And then knowing that if it's something bigger, than they can handle or we can handle as coaches because we're not professionals. Um, having a team doctor on site that, that sees our athletes a couple times a week, just having that resource makes a big difference. And then coaches just having to understand, you got to have that empathy. You have to have that understanding. And, and sometimes it's having a long, hard conversation just to know where they're coming from because you personally may have not gone through that. But again, sharing that time, showing that you care you can then say, okay, what's the best route for this individual going forward? Do they need a break from the team? Is it time to move on? Can they still be here? How, how am I going to best support them? And I think the fact when you have more top end athletes like Smoke coming out, um, it's saying, hey, it's okay. And that's where talking previously about we want to build this culture where everyone's okay sharing with one another you feel like you're in a safe space and you don't have to hide that. So when you break down those walls, I got to be this, this macho football player that has no emotion. Um, now, you know, okay, I can approach other people and maybe they're going through some of the same things that I'm going through because of this one question they answered. They gave this example when they were struggling. So I think that's the bigger piece of it. I don't think anything's changed where athletes um, are more emotional or have more needs. I think it's always been there, but you were told this is how you have to handle it. And then as coaches, it was, well, if someone's feeling this, let's work them even harder. So we've evolved, but I still believe that structure and discipline is what everyone craves. But now it's understanding, okay, how do we talk about this? How do we move forward and, and put people into this safe family environment where, hey, I'm going through some stuff right now. Can you help? And, and being able to offer that support as best you can. So I, I, I don't know if anything's changed so much. It's more that we're now recognizing it and we're doing a better job of saying, okay, this is right. This isn't right. We're going to be here to support you. Mm -hmm. No, and I, and I love that you bring that idea up. And what I heard from you is, again, there's definitely more awareness out there, right? Like there are people that are speaking up now and, and sharing and normalizing the conversation, which is important. And, and I always think back to, you know, keep it simple, simple. You know, right. I think it comes back to this idea of what is one of the deepest cravings of every human being? It's to, to feel seen and heard. And, and whether we want to, you know, 
our world right now is there, there is less focus on face-to-face -face communication. So we need to, and it goes back to, I just think back to what you were talking about. It's giving, providing the environment, creating the supports to where people feel seen and heard, where they can feel like what they're going through is they're not the only one and just build those, those, that trust and going back to your pillar of, of love and, and caring about and serving people. And, and that's really what the game of life is about. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that was, at least for, for our program, I'm sure other programs feel the same way. It was something that was so lost this year is you couldn't have that interaction. And I remember, you know, we'd be on these Zoom calls and the message was always have, have your screen on so I can at least see you facially because um, when I was teaching or when I'd be doing any kind of clinic, you know, the screens are all off and you lose that interaction. Are, are people laughing right now? Am I seeing the confused look so I can go deeper? Or am I getting the nods to say, okay, they understand where I'm coming from. That part was lost. And when you don't have the locker room open, when you don't have that team camaraderie happening, like so many positive things happen when you have those interactions. And that was essentially taken away. You know, you, you march into practice, you, you have a mask, you're sanitizing, all right, march out. You, you lose so much of what make sports so great is, is being able to share over those struggles, um, the joys, the achievements that's lost when, when that locker room shut down. So I think this is going to be really big for our student athletes as we go forward, that they can get back to that, get back to actual connections, because that's really what, what we crave. That's what we're all about. And you're right. It's that, that belonging, that being heard, that knowing that I'm a part of something bigger than just me, that, that drives so many of us. And I, I know that's what drives me on a regular basis, knowing that it, it's not just affecting me. There's so many other areas that it goes to. And yeah, sometimes I might be having a tough day. How do I push forward and make sure that as this group, we know that we're part of something bigger and, and, and there are bigger things that we're trying to achieve and, and accomplish. I just heard your idea of like the importance of family. Like it starts back to where we, <laughs> everything comes full circle. So I, I'm curious, you know, we're coming out of an interesting time, again, depending on when people are, are watching or listening to this. But you know what, as we talked about, the game of life is, is filled with adversity, struggles, challenges from time to time. Not that we expect them, but we understand that they do pop up. I'm curious, what is the focus moving forward for you in terms of getting you know, players and coaches back into the swing of things? For, for better lack of term, like what's the big focus for, for you and the program moving forward? Well, from just, just a playing, you know, standpoint, it's making sure guys are in some kind of shape so that when we get going in a competitive setting, we don't have the injuries. And I think the CFL has, has shown you can train all you want, but until you're in that competitive environment with other people, there's really no substitute for that. And, and so you've seen a number of teams have catastrophic injuries and it's not like these guys just didn't do anything, but having that long a layoff makes, makes a big difference. So how can we bring guys along, but not just saying, Hey, we're, we're stepping the competition right away. Hope you were doing something. Yeah. I hope everyone was, but I'm realistic. Some people couldn't. So how do you punish those guys that, that weren't able to do that? So, you know, got to bring the team along slowly but the other part is, you know, everyone's about can't wait to get back to normal. I, I don't know if there's going to be what normal was. We're not going to see what was in 2019 again anytime soon and maybe ever. And that's OK, because we're constantly evolving as people. And, and that's the reality of life. So, yeah, I'd love it to be, hey, we got eight games we're traveling all over the province and it's back to normal. It's not going to be like this that this year. So what's the main focus? What's understanding how we got to get back into things. How do you transition players back into, you're going to be in a school setting. How are you going to be interacting when, you know, guys are getting back to residence? How is it going to be integrating with these coaches who have been off for time as well? And, and you know, how they feel about interacting with some players, knowing that there's, there's still this pandemic looming. It's not like we're out of it just yet. So I think a lot of things that we laid the groundwork for, you're going to continue to have, you know, culture talks. You're going to continue to share and develop and, and hope that we have a better understanding because realistically, I don't think we're much different than other teams as, you know, you have a huge turnover. Um, 2019 was two years ago now, and you're going to have a whole new group of freshmen 
that is really almost two years because the people who came in last year, they haven't played, they're new. So, so you have almost two years of freshmen and maybe some veteran players you were counting on, you know, they're moving on, they're, they're, they're starting their lives. So you got this really interesting flux that, you know, younger teams are, are gonna have maybe more of a struggle than teams with more veteran players. And that's just the way it is. So how do we quickly acclimatize ourselves? How do we gel as a team? And if you have that initial base, that blueprint that you can rely upon, I think that makes it easier. But, but a big part is let's make sure we're good from a physical standpoint, but also making sure from, from an emotional and a mental standpoint, we, we haven't done this in a while. We, we haven't done this contact sport really uh, for most teams was October, maybe November of 2019. We're, we're almost two years out now. So how do we go about doing that without putting people's um, health in jeopardy? Hmm. And, and again, what I'm hearing from you is just like keeping focus on the big picture, right? About what, what this is really about is what I really heard from you there. So I have one last question for you, coach. And again, you know, I think it sort of is a great segue based on what we last talked about. You know, as we talked about, the game of life will present us with adversity, struggle, challenges at times. So I'm curious, what is one piece of advice that you would give someone that maybe they're just struggling to get their health back on track? Maybe they're going through a relationship breakdown. Maybe, you know, school and they lost their job or, you know, maybe just life has really knocked them down and they want one action just to help them get back on their feet, to create some positive momentum so they can get back on their journey to greatness. What is one piece of advice you would offer them? I, I think the biggest is find a connection, find someone that you relate with that, that you truly trust that can, that can help you. Um, I know a lot of times it's like, you know, I, I tell our guys control what you control, do this, that. It's tough to just say internally, I'm gonna get it done. Know that it's okay to go out and ask for help. And, and I just look at, you know, from a daily basis myself, there's times I got to rely on our coaches and I'm fortunate. I've got a, a wonderful wife that if, if things are tough, I can bounce ideas off of her or I can vent to her and knowing that, Hey, I'm, I'm going to be your rock or I'm going to be that, that solid piece in your life that, yeah, you can do this. And now you get a chance to recharge and, and you can attack whatever that challenge is. I think the biggest thing is knowing or give yourself permission, ask for help. And, and again, everyone's gonna be different, whether you, you're, you're married or have a significant other, maybe it's a parent, maybe it's a relative, a close friend. There's people out there that generally want to help you out. So don't be afraid to ask them for help and to lean on them for some support. And I know a lot of times it's seen as a weakness. I, I gotta be able to handle it myself. And there's all sorts of, like I said, cliches that, hey, seize the day, go out there, get, get it done. That's all great. But there's points where we might be in a funk. It's hard. And don't be afraid to ask for those people that, that you really trust, love, and, and that support you because they're, they're going to be there to help you. And everyone's situation is a little bit different. Don't be afraid. Give yourself permission to ask for help because if you don't ask, no one's going to really know. And, and then it's, it's too late. You, you run into the spiral. You get, I sometimes tell the guys, these little green men telling you, so many negative things in your head, it, it's hard. And we're just coming through one of the most difficult times uh, in anyone's generation. How do, we, how do we press forward? To me, it's ask for help. Don't be afraid to reach out to people you really trust and believe in because they're gonna be there to, to help you through it. I, again, I love how you know, honest and vulnerable you are there, Coach. And, and again, it's a great reminder to, to anyone listening, watching, is, hey, we all need people to pick us up. We all need people to throw their arm around us. Like we, we, it, it, we all have those moments where we struggle and it's okay to ask for help. So, uh, so I, again, coach, I love how you just, you know, gave that simple reminder. Absolutely. So coach, how can people get connected with you? Uh, maybe there's a coach, maybe there's players that really loving, again, what, what you're growing um, at, at Windsor. What, what's the best way people can connect with you? I think probably the easiest is, is through email. And uh, it, it's just my last name, Cercelli at uwindsor.ca. I mean, I've got things on social media and, and whatnot. I'm just not as quick on, on some of those. Um, but yeah, I think that's the easiest way. And uh, if you want to connect, whether uh, it's someone who wants to come to school, whether it's a coach who wants to learn more, shoot, I'll give you everything I've got. Um, 
yeah, I, I love the connection. I love meeting with people and sharing ideas because, uh, as, as my dad would always say, as, as soon as you think you've uh, arrived or made it, disaster's right around the corner. So we're, we're always learning. We're always doing, uh, doing more to, to better ourselves. So I, I'd, I'd love to have conversations like this because I, I learn more about myself and, and you, know, you learn more about other people and this connection. Like, this has been fantastic. This, this, this has been a lot of fun. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, definitely. And we'll, we'll share everything out in the description. Uh, in the community, on, on the YouTube, and on, on, on the podcast platforms. So coach, what I wanted to do was really take a moment. I, I really want to take a moment just to acknowledge you. I want to acknowledge you for the man you are, the husband you are, the dad you are, the son you are, uh, but most importantly, for, for the amazing human being you are. It's really interesting what I really took it. And, and again, we've known each other for many years, but it always blows me away. Like I, I really got a sense. I've always really been inspired by, by how professional you are, how you, how you always do things the right way. But, but what really I took from this conversation today was how much you see the big picture that it, it's really about loving and serving and caring for people. And you truly embody that. So, so I really wanted to acknowledge you for that coach. I, I appreciate the kind words, but uh, like I said, it's it, it's not just me. It's it's having it's having those support. It's having coaches. It's having parents. It's having siblings. It's, it's having uh, a wife, kids, people that you can rely on. And when you have that love in your life, um, it, it allows you to do those those kinds of things. So it's definitely uh, it's not just me. But I, I appreciate <laughs> the words. That's very kind. Okay, so here's my challenge to you. Coach shared so many nuggets of, of gold, right? And again, these are not just nuggets of wisdom that will help you succeed on the football field, but these are ones that will help you succeed in all areas of your life. And what I'm going to encourage you to do is to take one of those nuggets of information and integrate it, implement it into your life today. Hey, this is a reminder. Knowledge is potential power. It's the application of the knowledge that truly allows you to reach that next level of greatness. Put in the work today, as coach would say, and, and, and implement it so you can reach your next level of greatness. Have an amazing rest of your day, and I'll see you next time in the huddle. Have a great day, everyone.